So welcome back to Obviously Fight Talk. We're now joined by Dan Mova Hedy and we are now watching Fight Night Global 63. Um, so thank you for the video. It's up on YouTube. This is between Valdemir Ninoff and um, Miguel Falcao. <laughs> um, so Dan, this was crazy. Uh, as we're watching it here, um, some big shots landed here by Meninoff and here we go. Yeah. The, what's the, like the referee just for people listening they're up against the cage Minoff is landing at least 25 to 30 unanswered shots to the side of the head here and the referee is virtually like touching on them on top of the action yeah yeah <laughs> and Falcao gets back up and dropped by a knee still at least we're in the 50 region of unanswered shots now he's still trying to defend himself a big overhand landed he, there look, with that's, that's isn't that the, the usual thing you'd look at that and though he just gave up his back He's just sitting there doing nothing. Yeah, yeah, and just you don't, you know, again, just because he's moving, he's he's just acting on instincts, yeah. you know. Just just his training, I guess he's coming. He's he's a veteran fighter, but yeah, I mean, for me, this was very uncomfortable to watch, you know. And even even now that we're watching, I know some of the listeners can't obviously see this, but if you're watching it. You know, he's on queer street right now. You know, he's, he's, like, getting, he's just getting ragdolled, yeah. and and the referee had ample opportunity to step in. And and what's you know, no one likes to dig the referee out, but no one also doesn't like to see a fighter to get. You know, especially when they, when we put their safety. We're in neon. Their, we're oh, in oh, neon oh, belly here, and he's he's rolled onto a single here. But it's easily at this stage, we're easily up at about sixty, probably eighty unanswered shots here. Um, yeah. And you can see Valdemir Minoff here. Minoff, I hope I'm saying it right. He has a position here again. He, he sort of... Falcao was trying to get up, but his body is just failing him. He's on autopilot here. Yeah, and look at them shots. Look at these shots raining down. Like, it's on YouTube. If you just Google it and, and type in Fight Nights Global 63. Again, these shots. And the referee finally steps in. I would say if you put a counter, you're looking at between 90 to 100 shots there. Um, now, Dan... This came about because Big John McCarthy, I believe, was the first to share this, was he? Uh, he, he, he shared someone else's post. I yeah. can't remember the guy who actually shared it, um, so I can't credit him. But yeah, I mean, um, Big John um, shared it, then I shared it, then Goddard shared it. And and, it, and you know what? In, in the MMA community, that, that was very uncomfortable to watch. And I believe yeah. it was a rematch. Rob, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, like, as, as you saw in the footage, you know, that... They, that Definitely could have been been stopped a hell of a lot earlier. You know, our job is to keep you guys, you know, keep, sorry, so you guys keep the fighters safe and sound. And you know, we don't wait till they get knocked out. You know, and that's that's the that's some of the assumptions fans get wrong. You know, oh, he wasn't knocked out. You know, yeah. that, at the end of the day, that guy's a trained veteran. He's just acting on instincts. You know, yeah. he's just acting on his training. You know, but doesn't you know? So many headshots and the damage. It's really uncomfortable to watch, and it kind of, if I'm honest, really pissed me off. Yeah, <laughs> Dan, do you think there's something different? Because we we obviously speak to you like every show, and we talk about when referees make mistakes or something else should have happened, or there was there was a mistake in a fight. Do you think there's a difference between a mistake where you're criticizing the referee, and you know it wasn't incompetence; it was just maybe he missed something, versus something like this where it's a clear, you know, you're watching a guy take a beat down, and you're not doing anything. There's a difference. Yeah, he, he, here's the difference, right? I mean, if you remember the um, Chick Congo and Pat Berry fight, yeah, right? When Chick Congo uh, and Pat Berry were, you know, slugging Crazy lever, fight. and uh, it looked like the fight was over, and ne next thing you know, Chick Congo gets up, and Pat Berry's running to him, and Chick Congo um, lands a shot on uh, on Pat Berry. Insane right, fight. at least he was fighting back. Yeah, this whole time, yeah. this fight, the fighter on the bottom. He was just defending, not even, I don't even know what you use the word defending. No. He, he was just, I don't know what he was Absorbing. doing, you know. He was trying his best to defend and acting on, on, on instincts. And to your question, Rob, you know, that, 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 it wasn't, it's not a mistake that the referees made. The referee, I, I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah. I honestly don't know. And to a point, I think someone mentioned on, on, on some of the comments that I saw is, what were the corner men doing? Why yeah. was there not a towel thrown in or, or, or something, you know, to, to indicate, look, they're, their fight is done, and the, you know, I mean, I don't know how they how they play out in Russia or, or that event. And it is a, I mean, they're quite a big event because they're on UFC Fight Pass as well. Um, and I believe it's the same event that they've that fade off for one. Mm. So you know, it's it's a hard one to watch, and and it definitely comes down to 
I guess the referee didn't have the best interest of the like, fire, man. These, these you know? guys weighed in at 196.4 pounds. Um, just to give clarification, the referee's name was Dennis Sivo Players. That's what I'm going with. Um, but to me there, this is something, and I can tell when this happened, like with Dan, anyone who listens to us, we obviously have like a, a group chat that we talked to one about shows and ideas of what we want to put in the shows. Yes. And you were insanely angry by this, by looking at it, I think it's fair to say. And it, almost because you're such a good referee and, and Big John McCarthy is obviously such a good referee and Mark Goddard is such a good referee, Mogliata is such a good referee, that it must infuriate you guys seeing this guy on Fight Pass and on just national television, I'd imagine, in Russia as well, doing this. Like, this will make the sport look bad. It will make it it's un, it's clearly unsafe and this guy has no right to be in that yeah. cage. Uh, so you ma- you imagine someone who's just turned on new to MMA, and I think the word that much he would come to the head, and rightly so after watching that with Bob Eric. You no, know, yeah, if, my, if I've seen in the living room yeah. watching it with my with my with my family and friends or my kids, for example, who's like they sometimes watch UFC or they watch Cage Warriors or Bama, you know, to see someone get a beating like that, and, yeah. and they, it was a beating. It was it was yeah. actually horrible. You know, thank fuck. You know, he was standing at the end of the fight. You know, he didn't have to be stretched out of the cage. But what did it take for that referee to stop that fight then? You yeah. know, the, uh, the thing about it is as well, Dan. Like two things. Number one, if that was if that was an MMA movie and you seen that, you'd say that's unrealistic. The fight wouldn't last that long. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. number two, if that in real, this is real life. If Anton happened to Falcao, yeah, that how can that referee? Do you know what but I mean? Like as in, but who's to say, who's to say still won't? You know, yeah, the, yeah. at the end of the day, you know, in the sport that we you know that we love so much, we know the precautions of possible yeah. brain damage, etc. Um, and, and that could, you know, that could be start of something. Who knows? Five years down the line, the the, the result of what happened, they can unanswered shots yeah. unnecessarily could result into something else in a couple of years down the line. For like them. I, I have seen that. I've watched you firsthand in your fight. Your um when you're giving your rules meeting and stuff and you make it very personal when you're talking to the fighters and I've, I've sat in a lot of real meetings with a lot of referees and a lot of guys and I've seen a lot of fighters both to yourself and other referees that I know thank them for keeping them safe in the cage yeah. and it's a big that's a big thing that you always say and it's one thing that I always I hope listeners really you know because sometimes when you see a fight show like the UFC or Obama or Bellator, you just see the event and you don't see the what's going on beforehand. Like you guys yeah. are there hours before the event start. You talk to the fighters as a group for the rules meeting, but then you go and you speak to the fighters individually and you, you speak to them and you tell them the rules, what you want them to see, where you would say, if you're grounded and I say I want to see action, it's at and if not, I'm going to stop it. And I've witnessed that firsthand. So for me, who's not a referee, looking at that footage is infuriating because I know the work that you and other referees do to keep the fighters safe, and the fighters are grateful of that. I can tell you one thing, Mr. Dennis Silva Playas will not be on Falco's Christmas list for a card this year. <laughs> But on the on on the flip side of it as well, who knows? I don't, I don't know. I've never come across the referee. I don't know what his experience is, but it could come down to that again. Experience, maybe in his head as a ref, he's thinking, "Shit, if I stop it too early, the pressure of maybe someone's gonna say, oh, ref, you stopped it too early,' or the fight is not gonna be happy." At the end of the day, I've stopped fights for you know. Prime example was when Mario said got knee to knee to the chest. He he, he dropped down, and the way he dropped down, I assessed it off of that. That look. The way he dropped down, he's in a lot of pain, and you know my my job is there to prevent you from any further damage. Yeah. You know, and I, you know not a lot of people like that stoppage, and a lot of people did, but that's something I deal with. I'm and at the end of that, I know I've done the right decision. You're safe. You're ready to fight for another. You know what it is coming up from next Bama is fighting for the title. Exactly. You know you're injury injury free, and you you're there to fight another day. If I'd let that fight go on, and he did take a couple of unnecessary shots, and it turns out hey I've got a broken rib or whatever it may have been. You know, the blame still comes on me, but maybe that's that's the way this referee saw it. Maybe he's inexperienced enough to be, or co- not confident enough to step in there and go, look, fight's over, I've called out. And if Falcon got up and protested about it, I'm sure as hell no one would have disagreed with the referee if he had stopped her any, uh, uh, earlier than what he had done. You know? yeah. it's, it's a job. Do you know what it is? It's a thankless job. What you're saying, some people are saying yay and some people are saying that. It is a thankless job. It doesn't matter if you make the right decision or the wrong decision. You're going to get criticised yeah, either side. Yeah, 100%. Of it. So I don't but, envy you, but it's a job that you do well and 
by saying that, it yeah. has to be upset. But I do, I do think, with all due respect to that referee, that was a completely different story than your yeah, stoppage there. That was yeah, yeah. that was yeah. unnecessary damage. That I'm not sure what the referee was looking for Falcao to do at all. I can't yeah. see it. But it's, 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 and I'll give one more example, and we'll finish. And uh, only because you were there, now was uh, the Cage Warriors Dublin show. Yeah, Blaine O'Driscoll versus yeah. uh, Common Bridge opponent's name. Darren O'Gara. Straight after, I got, mm. straight after I got the doctor to check the car on his eye. You know, and, and it was the whole lead up to that to that yeah. point. Anyway, you know, he'd been rocked, he'd been picked picked off a couple of times, and you know, when he got when that shot landed, and he just the way he landed on his back. I stepped in and stopped the fight because, yeah. as a ref, you got you got to look ahead as well sometimes, and not many people would agree with. It, but you look ahead and you go, okay, well this could have been the outcome, and maybe it couldn't have been, but you got to go with your gut feeling and keeping that fight safe, and that's what you do, you know. So, oh, hey, like I said, fight it's, safe is paramount. It's a job he wouldn't do, and um, Dennis needs to go and get himself some training to do it right because, like I said, unfortunately the thing about it is, you know, in a football match and you give you don't give an offside. You know what I mean? People aren't affected, you know. And, you know, we've seen it here in Ireland, unfortunately, where things can go terrible. It's obviously happened in the UK exactly. at boxing shows as well. And you guys are there to make sure that that doesn't happen too. So, um, yeah, listen, Dan, great breakdown. And I appreciate it. It's, it's, it's probably the rawest you've been with us, is that you can tell. <laughs> and, I, and I think that's, you know, is testament to actually how you feel about it and mm. how passionately you take your job as the tour man in there. So um, credit to you. Um, 